Let's talk about this monstrosity. A little while ago, I made a video about this equation. Towards the end of the video, I suggested to the viewers that they try to solve this other equation. Feel free to pause right now. So the solution is E, the famous irrational constant 2.718 and so on. And yes, you can put that into Wolfram Alpha and get that very result. But why E? What is going on? As some of you may know, I enjoy playing with different ways of creating equations and math expressions. I mainly do this to explore an art style that involves mathematics. My aim is not to actually learn maths, but to create interesting looking equations. Although learning becomes an eventual benefit. This Frankenstein began as this thing, which also equals to E. Yes, the rest of the thing is just fluff I added on as extra. And this expression I totally ran into by accident. I was literally just dicking around on Wolfram Alpha. I was playing around with these guys. They usually end with 1, 0 or infinity. Just some regular limits, nothing special. At some point I had this expression and decided to just do this for the heck of it. And boom, all of a sudden Euler's number just shows up. Imagine my surprise. Here I am just trying to make another stupid way of generating the triple six and this rabbit hole opens up. I tried to read up on it online, but it got complicated fast. Something to do with asymptotics, a guy named James Sterling. The whole thing started to become some sort of hellish nightmare. I was definitely dealing with stuff that was over my head. Why can't math just be simple? Alright, so I'm going to try and kind of explain what I can. Let's consider the original formula that results in the number e. It's an old way of calculating compound interest. As n gets bigger, the result gets closer to 2.718 and so on. Now we can replace the ones with this and this. Then just do this and we have a fancy looking equation which equals to e. Looks familiar? Yeah, those two are equal. And you would think that as a result, those two would equal as well. But no, it doesn't work that way. Get rid of the limits and the two things are completely different. But I like the fact that we had two different ways of making the number e, so I kind of combined them together and got this. But then I wanted to get rid of the two, so I figured I'll do this, convert that and just kind of put them like this, and then finally change ones into the radicals of n. And yeah, a giant funky looking equation that generates Euler's number. Well, I hope this managed to clarify and simplify a few things. Oh, and by the way, you can do similar stuff to pi, and also the imaginary unit i. Which means we can also do this to the famous e to the pi i, Euler's identity. Now, making this video also inspired me to create this painting. It's my first finished work of art in the year 2024, involving math. I really like the way it turned out. I like the fact that I finally got to use some gold leaf. And I do hope to make a lot more. I think I'm going to call these Towards Infinity. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider liking, subscribing, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. And I hope I made your day a little bit better. And thank you.